Why, hi, it's Nicole Brandon, and welcome to Hourglass Bride. We have such a special show for you today. I am so excited and so thrilled. When we started this two years ago, we really wanted to talk about the happily ever after. What are the keys? What are the secrets? What are the tools to living that unbridled life, to having that happiness, that joy, the euphoria, the bliss, the freedom, the passion, all of those things that you've always desired? And at the top of my list when we were creating this show, I actually wrote down this woman's name today, Karen Cobb, because Karen Cobb is an expert in happiness. She is an expert in beauty inside and out. She is an expert in the music of the soul, in being able to create and flow with change, how to take the essence of who you are and make it extraordinary. And she was at the very tippy, tippy, tippy top of my guest list. And as the years have gone by, she is so busy. And she's working with celebrities and on shows. And and I ran into her the other day, and we were talking about Halloween. And she's even doing the makeup now for one of the grandest spectrums of Halloween extravaganzas in the planet. And the talent and the gifts that she has. And we were talking about makeup, and I was really thinking about not just bridal makeup, because that's, that's one of the most important things on brides' lists when they're getting married, but you also talk about when you're dating and you want to look beautiful for somebody, or you're just taking that casual walk on the beach and you want to look natural and flawless or you've just had a newborn baby and what's quick and easy for you to still be able to feel beautiful and is that even possible and then you have an event coming up like Halloween where you want to create this whole other persona and character and you can do that simply with makeup you could do it with your children with yourself with your spouse and so I was so lucky and so gifted because she had a break in her schedule and she is able to join us today and talk about a subject I've been wanting to talk about forever with truly the pinnacle when I bring you the experts and the very top people in the world and what they do. Certainly Karen Cobb is the top expert in the field of makeup and magic and so I am thrilled to talk to her today and Karen, welcome, welcome to the show. It is such a joy to have you here today. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, my, that introduction. I don't know what to say about that one. (laughs) Well, you're so talented. I mean, you truly are. And we've been talking. I mean, I've watched you work for years. And there are certainly people that know how to do makeup. And then there are magicians and people that are gifted. And you have the ability because you can make somebody look so natural that you would never know they were wearing makeup and then you do these academy award these red carpet events or you're able to create these characters for shows and these celebrities I, I look at your celebrity photographs and nobody can do makeup like you I mean and, and I know that you teach other makeup artists around the world and you teach makeup institutions and you are the grandeur of the grandeur and so I guess my first question is and I always love to ask this question that did you know like when you were a little girl when you were six and seven and eight did you make up your friends or were you always interested in beauty and you know honestly I when I was a little girl, my thing was besides like every little girl playing with Barbie because Barbie was just gorgeous. Um, but also I love to draw. And so as an artist, I love to draw beautiful women and just, you know, my interpretation of what beauty was at the age of seven, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, 10, 12, 13, which was a beautiful full lips and big doe eyes and contouring. And and, and it's amazing because now that I'm more skilled in in my field, I'm surprised that I, even though I didn't know the words for what it was, I was still utilizing those techniques that were just basically the foundation for me to become a better makeup artist and an emphasis on the art word art. You know, because I definitely took art classes to understand color more and shading and the whole illusion aspect of beauty uh, makeup and also uh, horror makeup. 
which is to me, I mean, I've looked at these pictures and I'm just scared just looking at the pictures in the photograph. <laughs> I mean, I don't even need to see it in real life. And when you talk about art and you talk about the doe eyes or the full lips, did Disney have an influence? Because I know that, you know, we've been recently looking at Disney characters and when I look at the Little Mermaid or I look at Belle or at Cinderella where the princesses always have these incredible features that you're drawn to. Well, you know, I I guess maybe subconsciously I will give Disney a shout out on that. <laughs> I will definitely acknowledge them. Um but also I think it's actually just general rule of makeup as far as what your goal is to create a particular, you know, illusion cuz makeup is an illusion and or it's an another way of putting a enhancing what you already have taking it to another direction, also making people focus on a different feature that maybe you want to bring out versus something you want to minimize. That's incredible. And so, when you you know, you talk about being a little girl and drawing. I guess yes. I've always had the question, is there a too young? Because I know people are like, you're only 10 and you can't wear makeup or you can't wear rouge oh, or you can't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Is there too young to wear makeup? There's, uh, there, you know, I was going to say there's too young to wear lashes, but I have put lashes on little beauty pageant girls you know, that were in single-digit <laughs> numbers. So I can't even really say that. I think it, it's, it depends on each individual So and also what their goal is. Now, you know, is, is a little girl going to wear uh foundation or powder and she has no reason to do that yeah it was too young i mean but then at the same time the makeup that they're creating now actually serves multiple purposes it's not just to minimize imperfections and maximize perfections it's also used to protect the skin from the elements such as like free radicals, the sun, um, you know, just elements in the air that actually becomes a benefit. So I know I've dealt with uh, teenage girls who are having maybe some acne problems where they don't necessarily need to wear the full makeup you get, you know, the coats and coats of it, but they actually can benefit from a tent um, that actually that also has a moisturizing factor to it as well as a sunscreen factor to it. So, you know, I, I to answer your question, is there a too young, it depends on what you're doing. You know, I, there's so many little girls that are, are doing beauty pageants and are entertainers, especially being that I'm based out of L.A., and as a makeup artist, that's when they come calling on me is when they're doing something extraordinary or also if they had, like, an accident. Um, I had a young girl the other day who she's 12 or 11, and she had fallen and hurt her her cheek pretty bad. And, you know, her parents were really concerned on when that when that healed, would it be a dark scar that she'd have to battle for, you know, for years. And it actually, you know, I gave them some advice and told them what kind of products to put on it as well as encouraged to use like a tent to help protect it from the sun. And now she's fine. So, um, again, you know, just to answer that question, is there too young? It's up to the the parent and the child, on what, and again, what the child's doing. Mm, that's a great answer. And then, can anybody afford makeup? Is there beauty on a budget? Ah, uh, that's a good one. I love that beauty on a budget. You know, um, okay. I like. There's a couple <laughs> ways of looking at this. It it really this they they sell makeup on all price points, but you have to be careful because. Some makeup, because you get it at a lower price point, doesn't mean it's a horrible makeup, but also to, or, or good makeup. Some of them, though, uh, have are made overseas, and they don't have the stringent um, FHA, um, not FHA, sorry, <laughs> uh, food, and, uh, food FDA, excuse me, FDA um, criteria that makeup that's sold in the U.S. normally has. So, for example, they may have lead in it. You know, and and again, it's your skin. Your skin is the biggest organ of your body, so you really have to be cautious, cautious of what you're putting on it. So, um, just know these things. Some of it has not been tested properly for around the eye area, so it's an eyeshadow. Or you buy it on a budget on the other stream, they're totally fine with the testing and there's no lead base anything in it, but the pigmentation is very light, meaning that. 
when you put it on, I'm sure everyone's had this problem where they put on their makeup and they thought this was going to be a really bright, fun blue color to put on their eyelids. And it turns out that it's a so- it turns out when you put it on, it's a soft blue and you can't get any color payout or the color it goes on and it doesn't stay on. So um, there, when you buy inexpensive makeup, a lot of times that might be the case. Now you can't fix that with things like primers, things that you could put underneath the makeup. Um, I like to use, like, I, I'm a, I like MAC. I use a lot of MAC products, but also, too, um, I do go to uh, different stores like Namie's and and Nigel's up in L.A., which is more for the, like, professional makeup artists. And so they have things like glycerin, um, and the over-the-counter version of it would be the Fix Plus at MAC, which has glycerin in it, and that helps make the makeup stay on longer. So you can always take the more lower, you know, less expensive Makeup and mix it with more um, more products that will help it stay on longer. Um, that will help. But I would say don't skip skimp on your must-haves, which is your skincare and um, your foundation, because you can buy a real exp- inexpensive foundation at Target and um, it'd be the wrong color, and you've been wearing it and wearing it and wearing it. And it doesn't help whatever you put on top of that. The foundation is not correct. So I wouldn't skimp on the um, the, the skin care or the foundation. And um, depending on how sensitive your eyes are, even your eyeliners. So that would be my thing. Color, lipsticks, you can kind of find that different places. But definitely those are the, the main items. Okay. That's fabulous advice. It really is. And so now I want to take the journey of the falling in love journey. Okay. So how about we talk about first dating? Because, you know, you want to look good to go out, but then you also have times when you are going to the fair or you're going to the beach or you're bike riding or whatever, but you still want to look beautiful. So what are some suggestions for a day and for a night for the woman looking to fall in love? Or even dead. Yeah. If people are sleeping, they're always like, can I wear makeup to sleep? <laughs> well, you know, the, hey, that's fair. I would go, okay, again, I'm, you know, I am I do enjoy my Mac. And I think other lines carry something very similar to this, and it's a big trend right now, BB cream. BB cream is wonderful because it has hydrating factors in it. It also has a little bit of a color. It also has a sunscreen um, as well as a primer. And what I mean by primer, it helps smooth out the texture of the skin. So that is a wonderful must-have in any woman's, like, I don't wear makeup, I'm naturally beautiful, I wake up like this kind of a look. Because you can put that all over, and it's just going to give you a touch of um, it's going to help even you out very nicely in all fa- all fronts. So um, that one I would definitely recommend, as well as for that very simple, I'm just going to the beach, I just want to look not flawless but beautiful and just like this guy, oh, she wakes up like this every morning. Um, that I would also use just a little bit of a light face powder uh, just to, Basically, help cut down the shine. So if you're a little oily, that's a must-have. Another must-have is a perfect lip gloss. That lip gloss that you do not need to even look in the mirror and you know it's going to be right. So it doesn't need to be very highly pigmented, but it just needs to enhance the lip color, um, your natural lip color, and or if you're not a big fan, because there's some women that aren't a big fan of their natural lip color, it needs to be a color that will minimize that. So, for example, um, on color theory, if you have like a brown spot or brown, you use something pink. That will that will basically minimize that brown and even it out. If you have a redness, you use yellow or green. That cancels it out. So with that said, some women might think, oh, my lips are too brown, they're too, they blend in too much. Use a pink lip liner, a lip gloss. That will actually help give you more of a kissable lip. Uh, another thing you can do is invest in just a very soft blush. And I love, I really love 
a blush that has a little bit of shimmer to it as almost like a highlight. And the highlight goes on the higher plane of the face, it, almost like a C. So it follows your eyebrow, right above your eyebrow, along the side of your eyes, up to the top plane of your cheekbone. And just a very light, not heavy, it should be the sun catches it as he's looking at you, gazing in your eyes. And, you know, it's supposed to be something just very romantic. And, and just some real great mascara. Um, if you're really having a problem with your lashes, you're like, oh, my gosh, my lashes are never full enough. Instead of painting on so much mascara and then having it flake off later, which is, you know, never a good look, um, use a little bit of lash primer. The lash primer, what it will do is it will it has fibers and it coats the lashes and makes them thicker and longer um, and prepares them so that when you put your mascara on, it actually makes it so you don't have to build up the mascara, just one coat and maybe a little bit extra coat on certain spots of the lashes that you want to make really pop. That's when you use the, um, the primer. So with that said, I would do a BB cream. Also, oh, I'm sorry, let me stop. I would first start with a great moisturizer because you have to have that. You need to have that, especially if you're going to be out at the beach or at the sun. You need to hydrate your skin and moisturize your skin. Start with a great moisturizer. Then go to something similar, a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer um, because, again, that's going to help just even everything out. A little powder, a beautiful blush, a highlight, and then a lip a lip gloss. It's a very simple lip gloss and a lot of mascara. And you can also take just a touch, just a touch, touch, touch of either your highlight or your blush and just, just kind of brush your eye on your eyelid just to give yourself a really soft wash of color. Not a lot. But that is what I would recommend for just that I am a natural beauty, no effort, low maintenance girl here look. <laughs> Just such beautiful advice. And on the, I, on the mascara, but I know that this is a question that's being typed in, so I'm asking, and, and it's certainly something that we've had asked before. Do you put mascara on the, the top or the bottom first, or does it matter? I love, the way I love to apply the mascara is I am very aggressive. I'll take it on the top, on top of the lashes, just like one coat on top. And then I will go underneath the top lash, Especially emphasizing on the outer corner, and then and you, and use my hand and I wiggle it, going back and forth like you're like you're brushing your t- um not going up and down like you brush your teeth, but back and forth left and right, in a quick motion all the way to the tip, focusing on the end of the lashes, like the very corner of the lash to the end of the lashes, because what that's going to do is going to show a graduation of um of intensity okay so you're going to start with a little bit on the top of the lash then you're going to go underneath the top lash with the mascara wand and go left and right quickly and but focusing on the very corner of the lash of the eye all the way into the very tip of the lash then what i like to do is take the um the lash wand um use the very tip of it and brush the bottom lashes underneath the eye using the very tip of it just to get a lot of a definition and then I may just I'll make comb it out so don't do the tip going straight towards your eye because that you might poke your eye out you're going to use the tip going um, it's going to be going upwards towards the sky and then it's just going to just brush underneath your eye on that last that very bottom lash and you're going to see a lot more definition that way Mm, sounds easy and it sounds beautiful. Now I'm going to go <laughs> I'm hang up. I'm going to go practice. <laughs> right. Do this. I think everyone should and, get their mascara wands out. Get their mascaras out. <laughs> <laughs> and when we talk about the eye, one of the other questions I have is color. Because do yes. you match the eyeshadow to your color of your eyes or to the glamorous outfit that you're wearing? It's your choice. Um, what's great, it used to be a lot of rules to make up, um, you know, the summer and fall and left and right and, you know, all those wonderful rules. They've kind of threw them all out the window, which is great and then horrible, horrible at the same time because now people are going left up to their own devices. So with that said, I like to first, before I put my makeup on, decide what's the look I'm going for. Ultimately, 
what is it that I'm trying to present? Like, what's the character I'm in that moment? So, for example, if I'm in Power Woman, I'm at work, I want, you know, I'm a, I want to be fo- people to focus on who I am and not how much makeup I have, or, but yet and still I need to subliminally be attractive to these people so they feel comfortable because that's another issue some women have. They think, oh, people won't take me seriously if I put too much makeup on, this and the other. It's, it really is not about how much makeup you put on. It's how the makeup is reading on you. So with that said, if I want to be power woman at work, I'm still doing the same steps as I would do as if I'm going out to a glamorous evening, uh, red carpet style, but it's just the color choices. So maybe I will be more muted colors, more earth tone colors uh, with just a pop of color on the lip, like a red lip. For, um, or a, or I might decide to do more of a dramatic eye as far as maybe a darker eyeliner, a little bit more heavier on the um, the eyeshadow, just a little bit for work. But then I will do, I will balance it with a very soft nude lip, so with a very minimal color. So um, to answer your question on how do you know, does it supposed to match your eyes uh, or your clothes? It depends on what you're trying to show. So. With that said, on the eye end, your eyes, uh, the general rule for the eyes is that to really bring out a blue or a hazel eye, um, you're going to want to go with the plums or greens. They, um, um, I'm sorry, plums or browns. That will bring out the hazel or the green eyes or just those more lighter eyes, plums and browns. And then um, uh, plums also work great with brown eyes also. So that's your general rules. You can use blue with the brown. Those will pop it. If you want to be more, hey, look at me, I'm more fabulous and, you know, I'm really trying to show off a little bit more, which is I'm all about, then definitely you can do more more um, more matchy-matchy type of makeup where it's all your your eyeshadow matches your outfit exactly and maybe you know your lipstick color is in the same color family. I would refer to like a color wheel. That is my best friend to help me see what colors complement each other with so I cannot so I have more choices. So I'm not just either brown and plum or whatever color matching the color that I'm wearing. Um, I could actually then look. It's like, okay, wow, this color is going to be complementary to that color, so I don't have to just be limited. So I can actually experiment with other colors. <laughs> I love this. I love your knowledge. It's just absolutely amazing. <laughs> and when I watch you, I mean, you were like a mad scientist when you put colors together, and I and it's whatever you see. I mean, it's incredible that you have a palette in your head. And that you can actually create that and just look at a face and know what you're going to do. And, and then I look at the work that you do. It's just unbelievable. I mean, it's remarkable. Thank it's amazing. you so much. And, and from, I mean, you make the most beautiful people look like they were just perfect, like they're goddesses that just rose, you know, from whatever, or men, you know, the most handsome of men or whatever. And then at the same time, you can look at a face that you've created and it and invoke an emotion. Yeah. From you know, from fear to happiness to sadness to sexy you can fall into people's faces that you've done. It it's just beautiful. I mean your work is just absolutely beautiful. And we have a lot of brides listening to this show. This is the Hourglass Bride and its relationship show and so when people are getting married, how far in advance should they think about makeup? And do you, is it worth finding a makeup artist separate from your hair person? And, and what do you recommend for brides? Um, well, there's a few questions there that you're asking, So, which I love <laughs> all of them. They were great advice because, I mean, if I could talk to the brides, you know, personally, which I'm so grateful for this opportunity, just take a moment here. I'm really grateful that you invited me on the show, Nicole, um, and to give me an opportunity just to express myself and uh, my talent. So thank you, thank, thank you so very much, okay. just so you know that part. Um, but to answer your question as far as with the brides, you know, um, I've had brides book me. 
I, I they've tried to book me a year in advance unless they're really doing a very elaborate wedding where there's a destination involved and there are like I've done Indian weddings where there it's a three day event, you know where it makes are there's a lot of bridesmaids. A year is a bit much. I mean, you know, that's that. But if it's unless it's really elaborate and it involves a lot for the makeup artist, then I would say yeah, to a year or more. But if it's just a basic, simple wedding, depending on the popularity of your makeup artist, I would give them eight, six to eight months is standard. Um, and definitely do it. Just a, do a trial. But for me, as a makeup artist, I'll take pictures, I'll take notes. But I also am very free for in and flexible knowing that that bride, that's how she felt that day. She might feel a little differently on the day of her wedding. So I try to kind of keep what we discussed loose because, again, things change. She might get a tan. She, you know, she might lose a tan. I don't know. She might. And so I, I'm very flexible. As far as getting, having the hair and makeup included, if you can find a uh, makeup artist that can do both, like I do both, that's a great idea. Um, especially it, it'll help uh, minimize the cost if you are having a small wedding and you don't really need a, a staff. That's great. But normally if it's a larger wedding party, which I would say over four bridesmaids, you're going to want to separate the hair and makeup. And um, and if you're dealing with a particular salon or makeup artist or hairstylist, see if they can do both. Uh, and again, also, I again, I do recommend the trial for especially the makeup, just to make sure you, whatever makeup products your artist is using, you don't have any negative experiences. Is only positive throughout the day, so that's why you want to do a trial. I suggest people to um, when I do it to do the trial on the same day that they're doing their engagement photos. I charge a little bit extra to finish the look and the hair and everything, but that way they really know how the makeup wears because they're doing their make and um it's and they're doing either engagement photos the same way and it actually makes it so much easier for the bride because she's now saved a little bit of money and also uh know has more confidence in the makeup artist because now she can see how the makeup uh, films, uh, how it photographs, because that's a big trick. Because sometimes, especially if you're a bride or individual that does not wear a lot of makeup, you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is too much. This is too much." But when you take a, when the flash happens and the picture happens, it's actually making you making the features kind of washing out about fifty percent of what you're seeing in real life. So, that, I mean, that's that's my feeling. No, that I mean, it, it's just such great information. And then, is it proper to tip the makeup artist? Um, you, you know what? It's it's appreciated. You know, I I don't want to say it's proper or improper or rude or not rude. It's appreciated, but it's not mandatory because the tipping, um, you know, it's just to ensure proper service. That's what it means. So it's it's up to you as our um, as the bride and also as of your of your relationship with the makeup artist. So, for example, if the makeup artist really did a lot of lot for you and you really appreciate it, then yeah, give a tip. But it's not it's not mandatory, but it's appreciated. Okay, because I know that's a question that always comes up, and then I've got two more big questions along that sure. line. Kissable lips, because a lot of times people could put gloss on and then it's gooey, or they put on a lipstick and then they kiss somebody and then it smears all over their their lips or over the guy's face yeah. or whoever they're kissing. Can we talk about kissable lips? Yes, we can talk about kissable lips. Okay, <laughs> so... There's a few ways of doing this. I mean, there's the simplest way, what you said, the lip gloss, and you 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 can also shop around for different type of lip glosses. Some of them that are not so sticky. Some of them are uh, more uh, creamy, and that will also do it. But my biggest trick there is to in, in, incorporate lip liner. So take a darker lip liner around the outside of the lips. Uh, when you're drawing it, just maybe just a little bit around the outside of the lips, emphasize it in the corners of the lips, then put your lipstick on because what that's going to make your lips lips look more fuller because that's a, um, a shading trick. 
you know, when they when you shade that, take a round circle on a piece of paper and you just shade um, ha- a part of the the circle along the edge, um, halfway of it, you notice that it looks more like a round ball. It's the same kind of thinking. Another trick is eyeshadow. You know, it sounds weird, but actually if you don't really want a sticky uh, but you want to have that sense of a shine, take a light frosted eyeshadow, like a white or a gold, put your lipstick on, and then take that on the, on the more fuller parts of your lip and just dot it and then blend them together. And so, again, that's going to give you give the illusion of more fuller lips. So those those are definitely two tricks that we use all the time. And then how about the bleeding? Because sometimes you have lipstick in it just – bleeds around, you have the little ring around your lips, or when you're kissing somebody, all of a sudden they get it all over their face. Is there a lipstick that stays that does not do that? Well, there's, there, you, can, you can invest in the lipsticks that are stains. They stay on. I mean, um, and there there's some great ones that I've run into. Like, I know Mac has a few. I, I think you can find some at Sephora. They're no joke. But the problem is they're they're on they're on. I mean they're they're really meant for the woman that's going to wear that same lipstick for a few days because they're stay they're staying on. You have to really t- you have to like do a scrub sometimes to get them off. Um, also another way to do it is taking a lip liner, clean clean um, dry your lips fully and make sure they are um, they are completely exfoliated so that it's just nice and smooth. Okay. Take your lip liner, which is the desired color you want, fill the whole entire lip in with that lip liner. And just really take your finger or a lip brush and just brush it back and forth and just push, basically pat it in so that lip is on. Take a, um, a, a tissue blot between the two, your two lips, and then you can go on and add your lipstick. What that's going to do is that's going to make that lipstick last so much longer. So if you can't find your favorite color in a uh, uh, like a pro long wear lip a lip stain, you can create it in that sense. Another way of doing it, as far as the bleeding aspect, because some people, you know, maybe they smoked or you know, as you get older, your lips become a little bit more per um, purse, you know, uh, more finer. You could take a lip primer. Um, and put it out on the outside where the lipstick tends to bleed and feather, on um, just on that outside, or take a face pa- primer, um, something that is designed to fill in the lines around the lips that where you do not want the lipstick to go. Then go on and just do your lipstick the way you normally will, because you'll find that that will help kind of create like a dam effect, and it will keep <laughs> <laughs> the lipstick on your lips. I love these little secrets and tools. They're just so perfect. I just I so appreciate your knowledge and your information. And then I guess my last question along that line is, mascara, if you're crying on your wedding day or if you're dancing and you're sweating or you're having sex and you're sweating and then the mascara runs and then That's you a, look like a baby raccoon. So. Right. Well, again, use good, you know, be picky about your mascara, number one. Number two, um, T- translucent powder. Now, the difference between uh, translucent powder is a powder that has very little pigment to it, and it's almost, and I'm not saying use this, but it's like a cross between like corn store, corn cornstarch and baby powder. <laughs> Do not use either one, but it's a cross between it. What it does is it basically sits on the top of the skin. It, it bonds with all liquids. Or that are on the skin, like your foundation, your moisturizer, it absorbs all that, and it just makes it stay. Like anything that touches your skin after the transfer of powder, if you let it, the longer you let it sit on your skin, and then and then um, the more it absorbs, then you dust it off. So anything that gets on top of it literally will just slide right off, just slide right off. So if you have a problem of raccoon eyes around the eye. Get invest in some translucent powder, some good quality translucent powder. Take it and be very generous and pat it around the eye area. Wait about five minutes, and you know, go on and do your lips, go on and do your eyes. Wait about five minutes and then dust it out from underneath, and then nothing is going to go underneath that eye. It's the mascara is going to stay in place. Just it won't go anywhere. <laughs> you know, if it gets wet, it will slide right off. 
Now, do you give classes? I mean, I know that you do makeup for for brides and for huge award ceremonies, and we're going to talk about Halloween, and I know I would also love to talk about your corporate training for makeup as well, but do you give personal lessons to people as, as well? That You know, if you do a bride or you do an event or you, somebody hires you to do their makeup for some special occasion, can you also teach them? Oh, yeah. I love to give uh, personal lessons one-on-one because – Again, you know, when I'm doing someone's makeup, I'm just an extension of what they want to present to the world. And I and I'd really, I really, I love to work with people who are just in a zen moment and they're just calm and so we can really in, engage. So it's even better when I teach them how to do their eyes and how to do their lips and how to just maintain this look and evolve as an artist themselves. I, I love doing that, the one-on-ones, and where we actually discuss in detail about skin care and, and find the right skin for them, skin care regimen for them, as well as um, their the right colors, and explain to them in person, this is why you, this is what this color is going to do to your eyes, this is what this color is going to do to your eyes, or, or, or this is going to make you look, if you're tired, this is how you fix that. This is how you get rid of the dark circles. This is how you get rid of um, any puffiness. And so it's really a, I love to do stuff like that, you know. So whenever a bride or a client has asked me to come over and just give a one-on-one lesson, I'm all about, heck, yeah, let's do it. That's great. Now, And I know you work all over the world. As you're saying, you fly, you know, everywhere for weddings. And I know that you even teach makeup artists how to do their trade and you work yeah. with makeup companies and even spas and resorts and you, you teach them, the makeup artists, really how to be able to handle the high-end clientele as well as the people that come in. And so for people that want to work with you, what's the best way for people to book you and to find you? You know, they can absolutely email me at Miss Ms. Karen Cobb at gmail.com. I'm based out of Orange County. You can also see some of my work. It's at um, um, Karen Cobb, K-A-R-E-N-C-O-B-B dot com, and just go backslash makeup. Or if you go to my main web page, which is KarenCobb.com, there's a little button that says Makeup by Karen. You can see my resume and uh, the pictures, you know, my, my, my celeb clientele, my wedding, some of the, some of the weddings. Is there's quite a bit on that website that you know information about myself. And I would, you know, I'd love to, you know, talk to any brides that have any issues. I also do entertain um, doing online classes where they can just ask questions and we just do tutorials and things of that nature just for them, specifically for what they're needing. That's fantastic, and I also love the fact that you teach makeup artists. That you know that you work and that you you train people how to use the makeup that they have and the products that they have, as well as for film and television and corporations and malls and all of that. I mean, you're just you're so in demand, and and your expertise is just incredible. And and now this month, you're getting to do one of the most fun extravaganza events of the century, and. I've had the opportunity to look at some of these photographs, and I could honestly say the pictures scared me. I don't even have to go. I'm already terrified. And so I would love to talk a little bit about Halloween makeup because I think that it's the one time of the year that people let loose. They let go. They want to be vampires, zombies, scary. They want to be dead. They want to be whatever. And also make up for your kids because it's a time when, you know, they may say no 12-year-old girl should wear lipstick and then that little girl, they're making her a zombie. <laughs> In the month of October, they're slathering makeup all over that child. And so um, I would love your thoughts and your pathway and your conscious flow on Halloween because it really is, I mean, the Fright Night and the makeup that you've created is the most spe- spectacular I've ever seen. So, Well, my gosh, thank you so much, Nicole. I really appreciate the compliments because I definitely want to be able to scare people. I mean, let me tell you a really funny, <laughs> funny story. I had a client, she was 17, and she just wanted to get her makeup done either before she went to class. Um, she was in high school, and she just, just for fun. And she wanted to be Chucky. And at this time, I was working doing um, horror makeup, you know, for various, uh, you know, for uh, various 
the Halloween events. So I was very into my horror. And so she, uh, I started doing her makeup for Chucky. And as I was doing it, I had to stop. And she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, okay, i got to find out first. Uh, do you want to be so scary that um, people are like, oh, ooh, scary, or do you want to be so scary that people will not sit next to you at lunch? Okay. <laughs> and she's like, um, I just want to be a little scary. I don't want the teachers to, to send me home because I'm just that frightening. So, so I had to slow it down a little bit and make it t- tame it a bit. But, I mean, actually you can see her picture um, on my website. But with that said, there's so many looks and levels you can do as far as makeup is concerned for Halloween. And, I mean, there's, um, you know, for your kids, just a cute little, if, you, if they're going to be a, a little bug or a mouse, I'm always a big fan of just a simple statement piece on the face. So, like, if you're pretending like you're a mouse, just a little mouse nose and some whiskers, you know, I think that's adorable, Um, versus something more intricate, some serious face painting action. It so just depends on what they're looking for. And for adults, I mean, can you, is there, is there, as you're saying, is there a too frightening? And where do you begin? Do you look at books? Do you go online? Are there tutorials? Or how does somebody do scary makeup for Halloween? Well, you know, what's great with the scary makeup, um, if you want to do really great scary. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> It, a lot of it is, called, is is shading, is in depth, so with various colors. So if you want to make yourself like a gash on your face, you want to start with a basic um, outline of brown on your face because that looks like the bruise, the, the skin is beginning to be, begin to be bruised, painted red on the inside. You know, take a little bit of yellow and white and blue, just very, it just streaks throughout because that shows the muscle. Um, and then outline it uh, very softly with some black. So that already gives you the depth. Then, you know, there's always the best thing in the world, which is scar blood, which you can get at any Halloween shop or fake blood, and that will make it look very sinister. If you really want to do a three-dimensional and, you don't, and you're like, look, I'm not that artistic, I just want to look like it's something, invest in a little bit of, um, and you're like, I'm not someone who's, Miss makeup. I don't want to get latex or spirit gum or anything like that. So um, use a little bit of Duo, actually, Duo Lash Glue. Um, you can take some cotton, drench it with some Duo, take that and press it on the face around where the scar would be, let it dry, and then put a little bit of a like a white or flush-toned um, wa- water-based makeup on that and then you can make a make yourself your own scar which is a a great way of doing it so now you have a three dimensional scar with just using a little bit of duo and you don't need to use like a lot of cotton just a little bit just strings of cotton so that it makes your skin look like it's raised and it's texturized so that definitely will help it also what's scary is the dark circles <laughs> under the eyes always scary i know that scares me every morning <laughs> when I see the dark circle. And then what about airbrushing? You and I were talking about airbrushing the other day. I was saying that I wanted to be an avatar, and you were saying you oh, can yeah. airbrush. Well, you know what? Airbrushing is great. I mean, there's um, – not, unfortunately, not a lot of people have airbrushes. <laughs> you know, there's a few people that do, but – there, that's a wonderful way. It's very smooth and has a great finish. But you can also uh, uh, get the similar um, finish of an airbrush by taking a water-based makeup, painting it onto the face, So it's, and then taking a, like a spray bottle of just an arm's length, spraying the water or the Fix Plus or the glycerin, just spraying arm's length and let it misting all over the face. Take a flathead buffing brush and then just go in a circular motion all around the face to even out any streaks. So what ends up happening is now actually your makeup looks like it's airbrushed on. And then you can continue on with your details. And um, like for you, for example, for your avatar, like the symbols that we're going, you need it on top of it. But I would definitely refer to like any tutorials, makeup tutorials or um 
uh, photo uh, references uh, references to use to inspire you to for a costume. Because what's great about it now is there's so many Halloween st- shops around that actually have a lot of this makeup. That and then also uh, you can create these makeups even out of your own makeup bag. If you have blue eyeshadow and you're like, oh man, I want I don't want to go buy more makeup, but I have all this blue eyeshadow I never use. Take a little of the blue eyeshadow, scrape it off. Take some of your foundation, mix it together, and now you've made a cream-based blue foundation. And you could just follow the same rule that you would to do your own your own um, makeup. You can use use your eyeshadows to help with depth and and highlighting. So you're not, you know, I mean, I have eyeshadows that are maybe I got them as a, a you know just a passing gift. Here you go, but they're not something necessarily that I would normally use. I use those in my special effect kit because. I can, I, I, you know, the more to, the more I use, the merrier kind of thing, where it's like I don't have to ration, um, ration the look. This is when you do get that dollar eyeshadows at the swap meet. This is the perfect time to buy those. <laughs> it's Halloween. <laughs> I love that. And so I guess now that you're a zombie or no, now that you're a creature or a monster or whatever that is, or now that you're a bride and you've gone to a red carpet event, What's the best way to have makeup removal? How do you stop being a zombie or stop looking like you're walking down the red carpet? Or what's the best way to take makeup off? Well, you know, there there are tons of makeup removers. Um, it's it's whatever is best because some people like for me, I don't have real sensitive skin, so I'm I'm I use a, a wipe like a, a Mac uh, makeup wipes and just to remove the makeup really quickly, and then I go in with a specialty soap that um, it's, it will really remove any of the makeup. It also tightens the skin, kind of like, you know, Dove, Noxzema, that kind of idea. And then, um, but you want to really follow it back up as soon as possible with moisturizing. So because once you you strip the skin of all this moisture, you definitely need to replace it, especially as we get a little older ladies, you know, the, the skin's not as taut as it used to be. So you have to definitely help it out with a little bit more moisture, you know, to do some scrubs. I mean, I love myself. Oh, I love a nice facial scrub. It's so re- rejuvenating. And then following with a moisturizer. So to take your makeup off, off use makeup remover um, of some sort, and then wash your face, and then use follow with a moisturizer. So and that's what about- definitely... What about like baby oil? Does baby oil work as a makeup remover? Yeah, you know you can. It's not really designed to be a makeup remover. It's something that I would use if you have makeup. Like for example, here's a here's a tip that's actually pretty important. Um, everyone likes glitter on their eyelids, right? Every, everyone yes. likes glitter eyelids. I like. I do. I love it. Or glitter on your lips. Glitter lips, you know, those that very fun, trendy uh, club kid look. Um, what we do is we'll take a little bit of duo lash glue and just get a tacky on the tip of your fingertips, and then you pat it on your lid, wherever you want the glitter to really adhere to. Then you take a little bit of glitter with a clean finger and you pat it directly on what you just put the duo, and then it stays on. And it will not go anywhere. You do that with your lips, like you put lip liner all over your lip, then you take the duo and you put it on top of your lip. Don't treat it like a lip gloss, ladies. Literally, just <laughs> it just needs to be a little tiny bit to grab the, the glitter. Then you put the glitter on and the glitter goes nowhere. So with that said, that's when I would use something like an oil-based makeup remover. You can use the baby oil um, but to, to be, dissolve the bond that the um, the duo is creating. So like if you wear false lashes all the time like I do, you want to have invest in an oil um a, a oil-based makeup remover. Um, also, if you are wearing waterproof anything, you need an oil-based makeup remover because that's the only thing that's going to break down the the uh, properties of the eyeliner. Just, I love this information, and I mean, and you do. I know you do hair as well as makeup. I know that you have worked with like, Quincy Jones and Aretha Franklin and Bill Clinton. I mean, you you just are the the celebrity 
you know, starlight or whatever. I mean, you are the, the dazzling, shining makeup artist, and I love it. And so my next question is makeup on the go. Because when yeah. we go to these red carpet events, we have these tiny little handbags that don't even fit our phones anymore since we have these new big phones <laughs> and <laughs> our keys or whatever that is. And I, I remember that I worked with you once, and you had these tiny little containers that you put base in or something or that you put eyeshadow in. And, and what do you recommend? Because the, the lip the base is so big and the, all the rouge and whatever that is that you have. What, what are your suggestions for makeup on the go? Uh, well, basically, if you can afford to get the quality makeup and, and you're, you have a time to apply it properly using the foundation, not just going straight from the washing your face to your foundation, but actually putting your moisturizer on and your primer and then your foundation and doing your primer for your eyelids and things of that nature, you'll actually find that your makeup will last you a ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> I'm, you know, you don't really need to touch it up for, I mean, they, they, some makeup has like an eight-hour wear time. I know I push that envelope all the time. I'm always on the go, and I'm shocked, you know, 10 hours after I put my makeup on, my, or 12 hours even, I'm like, wow, this still looks good. All I've had to do is put my lipstick on. So with that said, I always, I, I am a big proponent to do it right the first time so you don't have to deal with it again. And that's what's funny to me is when I do people's makeup, they're like, I don't need a whole bunch of stuff to take with me. I'm like, no, I do a good job. So, you know, <laughs> you're you're set. Well, so with that said, um, if you, you did are someone that me wants, and it lasted the next day, whatever yeah. you did for pictures, I t- and the next day I, I was still like, look, I look beautiful. <laughs> well, well, it's it, but that's that's the thing. I mean, that that has a lot to do with eyeshadow primer and and using the right tools to apply it to begin with. But if you don't have that luxury and you're like, okay, I am gonna have to touch up again, or maybe you want to change your look a little bit halfway through the day, I would say carry a powder powder with you. Um, I love those little tiny travel size brushes that you can get at like CVS. I mean, I'm not a big fan of using those as your main brushes, but as touch ups, they're fine. Um, I'm I'm more like invest in the Mac brushes or invest in Sephora brushes. Invest in the real ones. I I, I re- the ones that are really cost a bit that are natural hair because they're just made a lot more sturdier than the ones you pick up. They're like, oh my God, twelve brushes for five dollars. You know, no, no, don't don't do that one. Um, but <laughs> you'll be spending you know tons and lots and lots of five dollars to keep replacing those brushes. But I would say on the go, you just need a little, like your lips, your lips and a little bit of powder. That should be about it. It's just, it's just wonderful having you here. It really is. And I know we only have a couple minutes left, and I just have a quick question on that Halloween makeup for uh, makeup on the rest of your body, like your yes. hands, or your if you're doing body paint or something. Any recommendations for that for those that are just getting ready for the Halloween adventure? Well, my thing is try to use gloves. Because if it's for Halloween, you don't want to have to be like, oh, my God, I can't touch this, can't touch that. Just use gloves. But if you're like, look, I need to have just the top of my hands painted, um, go on and do that. But, uh, you know, just seal it. Get You know, if you can get some glycerin. Um, and, or like, like I said, like Mac has this thing called Fix Plus. It has glycerin in it with water. It's amazing. It really will help the makeup last longer and stay on last. Go, you know, basically stay on longer. So that helps a lot. So that will help it not come off so easily. I love that. Wear gloves. My, my advice is, <laughs> don't touch yeah. a thing. <laughs> wear gloves. You'll be fine. <laughs> don't drive. Don't touch anybody. <laughs> You know, just just paint the gloves the way your hands need to look. You'll be fine. <laughs> I love that. That's so perfect. And again, people can find you at www. Karen with a K K A R E N Cobb. dot com slash makeup. And I just I urge all of you that are listening out there to find her and to find her work because truly. You know, your talent and your skill, and I can't imagine having a wedding or having a special occasion or event or even being able to create 
in a dynamic look, like the horrifying Halloween looks or such a special, spectacular look, something that you want to be able to say, this is a look I've always wished I could have eyes that look like this or cheekbones that look like this, and, and to have you be able to teach somebody how to create this you know, natural beauty look. And I know that even people that are listening to the show that just had newborns or have little kids and people think, <laughs> I don't have time to put makeup on anymore and they do i mean the the techniques you teach are so simple and so easy and so accessible for people to feel beautiful thank you so much it's it's true and i mean it's and makeup is for everybody don't let people don't let any insecurities say oh i can't do that because whatever you can as long as you want to and ultimately your face is your calling card You know, it is what the first thing people see of you is your face. So you definitely, if you spend a, if you spend a lot of time with your shoes and your hair, your dress, include your face in there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's wonderful advice, and I so love that you're with us today. And I wish you a very happy Halloween, and I look forward to seeing the more frightening pictures. Even though they scare me, I'm still. (laughs) compelled and intrigued to see the mastery that you are creating as well as all the beautiful brides and and glamorous celebrities along the way. And you're just such a talented artist. I love the fact that that's how you started, was that you were saying as a little girl, you know, that you you. drew and that – and you truly have become, a, you know, an artist of artistry. So it's a grand gift and great gratitude to have you with us today. And uh, just we look forward to having you back again. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everyone. And you have a beautiful, blessed day. And, again, you know, be be my friend on Facebook. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Wow, what a beautiful show. So Karen Cobb and Makeup Mastery and What incredible advice. And I love the fact that she taught you how to travel with your makeup, how to look natural, how you can have uh, the eye techniques. I was writing as fast as I can, and I'm sure I'm going to replay this show and replay this show. And if you didn't get to write everything down as quickly as you wanted to, you can easily get a copy of the show. Simply send a text message from your phone to 55678, really easy, to send a text message to 55678, and the message is simply Nicole, and you can download a copy of today's show into your phone, into your iPad, into your computer, into any mobile device. You can get this show or any archive show, but you can listen to it over and over and over again, which I know I want to do because those eye techniques, even as she was talking about being able to make create that C with the shimmer around the cheekbone and the eye and on the lips, how to be able to use that primer and the lip liner and to be able to use that to fill that in. And so all of those secrets that I was just longing to hear, so I'm so excited to go back and to review those and to try those on my own because I know they're going to be effective and they're going to work. So there are your makeup tips for your beautiful, beautiful wedding your dates, your falling in love, your parenting, and for the spectacular and special Halloween. So this is Nicole Brandon and Karen Cobb wishing you the happily ever.